Many believe the temple must be rebuilt before the Antichrist can stop the sacrifice and oblations, and before the abomination of desolation can take place, but that isn't necessarily true. The Bible speaks of many kinds of sacrifices and oblations that are made without animals, temple, sanctuary, tabernacle, or altar. These are some the Bible mentions. A drink offering, Genesis 35.14, an oblation of unleavened bread, Leviticus 2.4, an oblation of first fruits, Leviticus 2.12, of jewels and precious metals, Numbers 31.50, of land, Ezekiel 45.1, of grain, Ezekiel 45.13, a spiritual sacrifice, 1 Peter 2.5-9, a living sacrifice, Romans 12.1 and 2, and a sacrifice of praise, Jeremiah 33.11. Another thought is, the temple may at this present time already be complete and functioning, Claims have been made that the Jews have in their possession all the temple furniture and instruments required to re-establish the temple ceremonies. They also know the location of the temple and the most holy place. The location doesn't interfere with the Dome of the Rock. In fact, according to Revelation 11.2, the outer court of the temple is given to the Gentiles. This small structure located at the northwest corner of the Temple Mount is called the Dome of the Tablets. It's also called the Dome of the Spirits. The Ark of the Covenant contained the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, and God's Spirit rested on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. This small gazebo-like structure is located west of the Eastern Gate, and it's positioned directly above the spot where many believe the Ark of the Covenant rested in the last temple. While Jews are not allowed on the Temple Mount, they do have access below the Temple Mount at ground level where the actual temple was built. It's possible the temple's been reconstructed in its proper location on the actual ground where the last temple rested, and the daily sacrifices and oblations are already secretly ongoing, and will be discovered at a future date and stopped by the Antichrist. It has also been theorized a prefabricated temple could be assembled in a matter of days. However, the Bible speaks of a time when God will bring the Jewish people back to Zion, and the Ark of the Covenant will be irrelevant. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. Jeremiah 3.16 For the Antichrist to cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease could be as simple as putting a stop to the daily sacrifice and oblations of prayers at the western wall, also called the wailing wall. Daniel 9.25 gives us a period of 69 years until the Messiah comes. 1947 plus 69 years places Christ's coming at the end of the tribulation period in the year 2016, just before the 1,000-year millennial reign of Christ. Many Christians like myself have spent a lifetime believing this could not be, because we have been taught the rapture will take place before the tribulation, Christians have also believed no one can know the day or hour of Christ's coming, because Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Mark 13, 31 and 32. See also Matthew 24, 35 and 36. Are these verses talking about the day heaven and earth pass away, or Christ's return? It is true in both of these passages, Jesus does speak about his return. Shortly, we'll see how Jesus' phrase, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, is in fact a big clue about the time of his coming. Jesus clearly said his coming, when he appears in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and at the sound of a trumpet, and when the living saints on earth and the dead saints in heaven will be gathered, will be after the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. A solar eclipse occurs September 1st, 2016. A lunar eclipse occurs September 16, 2016. 
Not only did Jesus prophesy these eclipses in Matthew twenty four twenty nine, Mark thirteen twenty four, and Luke twenty one twenty five, they were also prophesied in Isaiah thirteen ten, Joel two ten through thirty one, Joel three fifteen, Acts two twenty, and Revelation six twelve. Understanding the context of Jesus' statement, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, goes further than including the preceding verse. The day and hour that no man knows was a Hebrew idiom referring to an exact moment at the Feast of Trumpets and it was widely understood by Jews in Jesus' day. The Feast of Trumpets always falls on the first day of Tishri, the seventh month. The first day of a Hebrew month always begins when the smallest crescent of the moon first appears rising above the Mount of Olives following a new moon. Depending on the positional relationship of the sun, earth, and moon, One or two days may pass during the new moon phase, before the new crescent can be seen from the Temple Mount. The priest would faithfully watch for the moment the crescent moon could be seen. The moment the first crescent would appear was the Hebrew idiom known as the day and hour that no man knows, because no one knew the exact day or moment it would happen. The instant the priest saw the sliver of the moon, they would blow the shofar trumpet to announce the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 25, 1. To a Jewish listener, this phrase takes on a far different meaning than a Gentile mind would understand. It was Jesus using this Hebrew idiom to indicate the time of his appearing in the last days when the trumpet shall sound. Sixty-nine feasts of weeks will transpire from the time the command went forth on November 29, 1947, until the Messiah comes. The Feast of Trumpets following the 69th Feast of Weeks will be heralded in the moment the shofar trumpet blasts, the instant the crescent moon rises on the Mount of Olives, October 3, 2016 at 8.29 a.m. in Jerusalem, Israel Standard Time. This moment corresponds to October 3, 2016, 2.29 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, October 3, 2016, 1.29 1.29 a.m. Central Daylight Time, October 3, 2016, 12.29 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, October 2, 2016, 11.29 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Now let's review our timeline and add a few more details. November 29, 1947, the command goes forth with the UN Resolution 181-2, and the countdown begins. May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation. June 5th through 10th, 1967, the Six-Day War occurred in a Jubilee year. Jubilee years are every 50th year. 2017 is the next Jubilee year. One of the things God requires in a Jubilee year is for the land to return to the original owner. January the 14th through the 17th, 1964, Arab leaders united to plan for the destruction of Israel. These forces carried out their attacks against Israel through their various terrorist groups, airstrikes, mines, and mortar shelling. By May 31, 1967, enemy forces are positioned on Israel's borders for an all-out war. The Iraqi president announces the goal is to wipe Israel off the map. After years of provocation and attacks, Israel responds in defense with well-orchestrated precision lasting six days. Through the engagements of war, Israel takes control over Jerusalem and many other areas that God promised to them as an everlasting inheritance. Jews have endured centuries of persecution. They were driven from their land and scattered throughout the world. Jesus said, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Luke 21.24 The 62nd Feast of Weeks comes in 2009 at the beginning of the Tribulation. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 9.27